Well, hello there. That was a little hard to get off. My beautiful internet friends, welcome back to my channel. Four years. It has been four years since I started this channel, and much more importantly, since I lost my leg. And I still haven't found it. So four years ago, I walked into a hospital up in Denver on two feet, knowing that I would be leaving the hospital without one of them. I knew that it was the last time I was gonna take steps as a two-legger. I still remember walking into the waiting room. It felt so surreal. Uh, I gave my mom and my then husband a hug. I called my dad. He said, I'll see you on the other side. And then the good drugs hit and I went under. Four years later, it has been quite a journey and every single year has felt so different. I'm gonna put a link down below to some of the other previous anniversary videos. Also noting that this video is about a week and a half late because I was in the middle of moving and couldn't film it and actually release it on the anniversary date, but it's close enough, we're gonna count it. But first, before we dive into this, you may have guessed what time it is, sponsor time. A big thank you to today's sponsor, Bright Sellers, a company that I have actually wanted to work with for quite some time now. So I love white wine, I'm still working on my red palette, we aren't there yet. But on special occasions or game nights with friends, I love having, you know, a glass to sip on. I'm a total beginner when it comes to wine, so going to the store, I was basically just choosing, you know, it, how pretty the wine label looked. However, Bright Sellers actually matches you through their quiz with a variety of wines from small vineyards worldwide. They are curated to what your taste preferences are, and with hundreds of exclusive wine brands, you'll be able to try some wines that you've never tasted anywhere else. If you're anything like me, someone who is not super wine educated, each box comes with wine pairing suggestions and education cards. I love knowing more about what is actually in each bottle, such as the flavor notes, so I can kind of learn a little bit more about it. Also, if sustainability is something that you are striving for in your life, Bright Sellers offers a number of sustainable brands in their wine repertoire. My personal favorite for my box is the Hazel Air. First of all, super pretty label. Through Bright Sellers, you get to decide how often you want to receive one of your boxes from them. As you guys know, sponsors like Bright Sellers are what make this channel possible. If you are interested at all, I would highly recommend checking out their link in the description below. And right now, Bright Sellers is actually offering a limited time offer of 50% off their first six bottle box. Click that link in the description to find what wine is going to best suit you. So go ahead and click that link in the description and let's jump back into the video. Now that we are four years into this, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's actually been like to live life as a below the knee amputee. And then I'm actually going to rewind watch one of my old videos where I talked about the dreams I had, like what I wanted to do when I got a prosthetic leg. I have not watched this video in three years and I'm, I don't remember what I said and I'm kind of curious what goals or dreams I have achieved and what might have shifted. The first year was a lot of agony and disappointment and pain because I had a fall, the surgery didn't end up working out correctly, and I had to wait to have my leg amputated a second time that August. But uh, ironically, October 11th of 2019, one year after my first amputation, I got my first prosthetic leg and I feel like that really started my journey of being able to walk again. That first year, there was so much adjustment to like how different everything felt, how weird everything felt, kind of the societal aspect of integrating into society as someone who looks different. But then that second year was so good because it was learning to walk, it was learning to run, it was learning to snowboard, rock climbing, doing all of these things that I'd been dying to do. And then the pandemic hit, so that complicated things a little bit. 2020 to early 2021 was just kind of a blur. A lot of staying at home and working and continuing to kind of walk normally. This past year, I feel like has been marked with a lot of frustration and feeling like taking steps back and disappointment because I've been experiencing a lot of nerve issues, a lot more pain. I've still been able to do a good bit in the last year, but I feel like 2021 to 2022 has been a good reminder that this is not a straight line. Living with this kind of a disability, it's never done. You're always adjusting to something. You're getting adjustments made to your prosthetic leg. Phantom pain got a lot worse this year. And I'm not sure if I've released this video or not, but I just moved for accessibility and to be able to use a wheelchair. I got a wheelchair this year for my good friend Annika, which has been an amazing device to be able to use, but it's also forced me to really come face to face with a lot of the internalized ableism that has been in me. Feelings of mobility devices like wheelchairs being bad or feeling like I'm less or I shouldn't have to use one and processing through those emotions. And I honestly think that has been one of the most beneficial things of this year. There's a loud truck. One moment. It's been the year of not shattering boundaries and doing incredible new things, but of recognizing the limitations that my body actually has and how to respect those without judgment. Allowing myself the space to accommodate my body in a way that it requires without feeling crappy about that or feeling, you know, judgment or resentment. Still absolutely work in progress, but something that I'm really glad I finally had to face because it feels so much better being able to use my chair and not feel 
icky about it, but to actually be really grateful for it and be like, okay, cool, this is another tool in my arsenal for days when my leg isn't good. So I'm really glad to have the last four years under my belt, but I feel like it's easy to get excited about doing new things when you have that opportunity, but years into it, when you're faced with the understanding that this is gonna be a lifelong journey, that this is, you know, an ever-changing process. I'm gonna get more and more comfortable with everything, but realistically, I'll probably be looking at more surgeries. Realistically, my body over time, it's probably not gonna get better. That part has been very bitter to swallow. However, with that being said, I got back to jiu-jitsu this year, and I don't even know if anyone cares about jiu-jitsu on this channel. Let me know down below if you do, but dear sweet Jesus, that has been the best thing that I have done for myself this year. I have never felt more comfortable in my physical body in my entire life. That's like including going through years of eating disorder recovery and all different kinds of surgeries and body stuff. I have never felt better than being on the mat and learning how to use my lack of a leg as a tool to my advantage in a fight. That is so cool. Yes, it's a disadvantage, but good God, it is an advantage too. You can check out my video on jujitsu up above if you're interested. And I wanna talk about some of my goals and dreams for this coming year, but first, let's take a look at ones that I had before I was even walking. I also find it so weird to look back at videos from years ago. I just feel like a very different person, but I'm really grateful to kind of have the history that this is. So let's dive in. It is now T minus two days until I have my second below the knee amputation. Oh, I didn't realize I filmed this two days before. So I was about to crutch my way into the second leg chopping. Well, that is a lot to deal with. I thought that we would take today's video to focus on the reason why I did this in the first place. Honestly, I think this will be helpful for me and I thought it'd be fun to share this with you guys because I talked about like the reason I had this amputation in the first place. I mean, I was tired of living in pain and I wanted to live a more active life because being active is a huge part of my identity. And it still is, I would say more than ever. And I have been able to get so much more active since filming this, which is really cool. You did it, Joe. I just want to like pat little Joe on the shoulder and be like, it, it will be okay. It's going to be challenging, but it will be okay. But there are so many things that I am ridiculously excited about. There are so many things that I am like hardly even want to think about because they get me so excited. Like the, the possibility possibility of them happening is simultaneously the most exciting thing and the most heartbreaking thing because I can't do them just yet, but it, but it could be coming and it could be coming soon. So these are the things that I am looking forward to. These are the things that I will be taking you guys along with me to do and the reason why I started down this road in the first place as I head into my second amputation knowing how rough it's going to be. Just a quick note, when I watch back videos of myself, I come across as so much more chipper and positive than I was actually feeling. Like this isn't inauthentic, but when I think back to like the emotions that I was having during that time, I was really trying to be like, I am committed to being hopeful and to looking at the things that I can do because right now things are trash. It was awful having to go back in to have more of my leg cut off. I got really emotional about it. I was like, they're taking more of my body. Haven't I lost enough? It ended up being totally fine and actually worked really well though. With that being said, these are the things big and small that I cannot wait to do and share with you guys when I get there. Let's start with a simple one. Walk my dogs around the block on days of my- I have done that so many times. If I can find the video clip, I'll pop it up on screen. But taking my dogs for a walk is an amazing thing that I have been able to do for years now. The walks are very short. I take them up to the forest to go actually run and get energy out because they're big and uh, they hurt my legs sometimes, but I can do it now. And that's amazing. And that is one of the most exciting, simple, ridiculously little things that I, I cannot wait to do. Just take my dogs for a walk in the morning. Secondly, a little bit of a bigger goal. I want to go for a jog with my dad. Ah, I'm going to get emotional with this one. So... I grew up, my dad and I would go jogging. He's been a jogger his entire life. And um, I could never run with him. Oh God, come on, I put on mascara and eyeliner. It's gonna bleed all over the place. I had the opportunity to do this and it was actually filmed by Runner's World. I went for a jog with my dad. It was one of those moments that I was just, oh, whew, uh, on top of the world. It felt incredible and I'm so glad to have that documented, to have that for the rest of my life when we can both run. It felt like the most normal thing in the world and also one of the most emotional experiences. It was incredible. I got to do that. All right, so two goals down that I did. Building on that, getting a little bit bigger with the vision. I wanna run a 5K, but I think what I actually wanna do is run a marathon. No, we're not running a marathon. However, I did run a 5K. I love that I've, I've gotten these checked off so far. Um, so I ran a 5K around the same time that I jogged with my dad. The Runner's World did a video about it. I'll link that down below. Oh my God, the feeling of crossing that finish line. I literally just like, 
was like, yay, I crossed it. Then I was like, oh my God, I did it. And was just sobbing as the cameras are like zoomed in on my face. Thanks guys. It was truly one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I remember turning the final corner of that race and seeing the finish line and being like, how did I do this? Like this was so impossible to even dream of doing, but I did it. Also what I said about running a marathon there, you know what, I could prove myself wrong. I don't think that one's in the cards for me, at least right now. I'd rather focus on, you know, other sports and taking care of my leg a little bit better right now. I live in Colorado and if you don't know about Colorado, we have a ton of 14ers, which are mountains that are over 14,000 feet. They are intense to climb. You can get to the top of, I think all of them actually. And I would love to hike a 14er. I did hike a 14er previous to losing my leg. I wanted to do it because I could say I had done it. 14ers are basically mountains over 14,000 feet in Colorado. They're like a big thing, They're like a big hiker thing. It's a big achievement. It's hard, it's a hard hike. Um, and I did it once when my leg was trash. I knew I was gonna be in an insane amount of pain, but I wanted to do it anyways and I did it. But I wanted to revisit that uh, as an amputee, actually getting up to the top of a mountain. I was going to train for that this year, um, but I decided against it because of the nerve issues that I was having. And that's definitely something that I'd like to shoot for in the future. I will do that one day. Haven't gotten there just yet. Swing dancing. So if you watched one of my videos that long ago, I used to go swing dancing every Sunday night in high school and I love it. Swing dancing. I This has actually been on my list of uh, things to look for classes for and places to go to in the area because I love dancing. Every time I say that, I want to add the caveat that I am not a naturally talented dancer. I'm just not. And I've accepted that fact for years, but I love it. And so this is something I'm actually actively pursuing right now. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna, and I think it's gonna be great. I'm not sure how quickly I can move my feet and like some of the spins with the prosthetic, but I'm gonna make it work. Zero skill, no skill, unbelievably white in the stereotypical white people can't dance when it comes to dancing, but I- Still true. I wanna be able to just like dance like an idiot at any concert that I go to because I love being able to like move with the music. I got to do this. Apparently one of my goals was to dance like an idiot at a concert. Check and check. I went um, actually by myself to a Matt Carney concert. It was one of the best experiences that I've had, like taking myself on a date. I always felt weird doing things alone, like going to a theater, going to a concert, anything like that. I would never do it. But as I kind of went through a divorce this year and everything, I was like, I really want to go to this. And so I did. And I danced like an idiot because literally I did not care what anyone thought who was around me. And a lady came up to me and she was actually like, you're my hero. Like, thanks just for expressing yourself, which I think meant that I, I was dancing a lot. But gosh darn it, I was her hero for the night, so I'll take it. <laughs> Do the incline again. So the incline is this ridiculously difficult short hike in Colorado Springs. Yes, so the incline is an infamous hike in the Colorado Springs area. You're basically going up the old railroad tracks that brought you to the top of Pikes Peak. It's not to the top of Pikes Peak. It is an insane amount of elevation in a very short period of time. Very challenging hike. I did it a couple times before, previous to limb loss. And I do wanna do that again. The problem is the trail back down is very steep downhill and winding. And right now that's gonna set my leg off a whole lot. So I'll hold off on that goal for now, but I will get back to that. That one is still on the list. This doesn't require a working prosthetic leg, but just get back to jujitsu. I would love to get back to jujitsu. I am back at jujitsu and it is giving me so much joy in life and giving away a secret here. I am actually training for competition. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm committed to it. When I got back into jujitsu, I was like, I'm just going to do this as a hobby just for fun. I don't need to compete. I'm not that competitive a person. I like lying to myself sometimes. I am a very competitive person with very select things. The vast majority of games and activities, I can lose all day. I'm happy. I'm fine. When it comes to combat, I, I like, I like winning. I like actually pushing really hard. And so as soon as I actually got back into the gym, I was like, no, I think I actually want to compete. Main priority is not getting injured, so I'm making sure I can do that safely and train well for it, but I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it this coming year. Because jujitsu is in my blood. It is like a part of who I am and I miss it so much. And soon I will return to the mat. Run with the bulls in Barcelona, or is it Madrid? I'm not sure. I actually don't wanna do either one of those things, but it's- Okay, okay, good. For a second I thought one of my goals was actually to run with the bulls in Barcelona. Is that even like good for the animals? I don't, I don't know anything, anything about that. I'm glad this was a joke because if I actually aspired to this, I would have been concerned concerned for my previous self. Go back to Ireland and walk around the streets of Dublin. Okay, so uh, I went on a trip to Ireland a few months before filming this video where I was on crutches and an eye walk the entire time and I'm still dying to go back there and actually explore the country on foot. Walking around new places is my favorite thing to do. Of all of the things, that is my favorite thing. And one of my best, best friends just moved to Ireland and so I'm planning on going and seeing her this year. So I think this goal will be checked off the list very shortly. Specifically like walk through the city. Just be 
side note, my music was way too loud in these old videos. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I think I learned about audio balancing a little bit better, maybe? So I have crossed off a significant portion of the goals on my when I can walk again as an amputee list, and I'm actually really excited about that. Climbing a 14er and doing the incline, definitely still on the list. I'm gonna wait until my leg is feeling a lot more stable to be able to accomplish those, but the uh, jiu-jitsu competition thing, that one, that one is coming up soon, and I'm anxious, nervous, excited about it. So I would say that my goals moving forward for this year of my journey as an amputee are definitely get back to snowboarding. Last year I was able to learn how to snowboard. It was incredible. I had a lot of issues with my socket and trying to get things right. And it's kind of this constant process of I gotta drive hours into the mountains to get there. You've made some adjustments to your leg. Maybe they'll work that day, maybe they won't. So now that I kind of have a better idea of what works and what doesn't, I'm gonna go back up starting in November and see how I feel. Maybe join an adaptive team. Maybe, maybe not, depending on how my leg feels. I don't know, as much as I can compete in anything this year, I'm here for it because whatever my body can enable me to do right now, I wanna do because I'm aware of the fact that this is not forever. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of my leg and my body the best I can. Um, but right now I am capable of doing some things and I wanna capitalize on that. I think my other goal for the year is to really, really learn to respect the boundaries that I have in the moments when it matters the most. So here's the thing. In daily life, I'm getting pretty good about being like, nope, I can't do that right now. I don't have the energy for it or I'm in too much pain. Nope, I need to use my wheelchair. Okay, that's not a bad thing. I'm good with it, no judgment, let's do it. In moments when people are like, let's all go do a thing or if I'm you know, on the mats with someone and I know I should probably slow down or like not roll as hard, but they're pushing. I throw logic and reason aside and I'm like, let's go, right? Even though I know it's gonna hurt me. Those moments I'm looking to eliminate or at least scale down quite a bit. I've never been really big as a goal person. And I feel like when I say that, it sounds like I'm a lazy bum and I'm not. I mean, some days, yes, but I feel like the older that I have gotten, the more I have been interested in finding peace, actual connection with people and that being pretty much it. So I definitely have physical goals because they excite me and I, I love doing things, but more than anything, I wanna take care of myself and the people around me and find moments when I feel at peace because those are rare and build a life that I continue to wanna be a part of. That has nothing to do with being an amputee, it's just a person. Four years in, this is all of the things. It has challenged me in ways I didn't think were possible. It has benefited me in ways that bring me so much joy. It has been frustrating in some of the setbacks. Um, it has expanded who I am and the understanding and compassion for myself and other people that I have. It has helped me overcome internalized feelings of ableism and given me a whole lot of cool opportunities. So happy four years to me. It's so funny. It doesn't actually seem like that long of a time. Four years is like a short amount of time in someone's life. I'm still new to this. I'm still figuring it out and I'm excited to see what this next year brings. A big thank you to today's video sponsor. Check out their links down below to my beautiful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you for your continued support of this channel and most importantly to you watching this video right now. Thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today celebrating and listening to my stories of four years as an amputee. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else and you chose to hang out with me for a few minutes and I really appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.